Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous. We are talking about an over-the-top beautiful day. We are in Slade, Kentucky is where we are uh, on this gorgeous. It is a Tuesday afternoon. I think it's October 28th, 2024, somewhere around there. And for the second time in my life, I am very proud to bring onto this show a good friend of mine who I have not seen in way too long, um, Dan Dorson. And you want to hold up your oh. your props, Dan. Yeah. So Dan Dorson, for anyone who missed the, the truncated interview uh, from a couple of years ago, uh, Dan, for about 20 years, uh, was an endangered species biologist working for the U.S. Forest Service here in the Daniel Boone National Forest. You might know it as the Red River Gorge in Kentucky if you're not familiar with it. Beautiful place. We are at the Welcome Center right now where his lovely wife Judy might be coming in to join us if she can find time between her job duties at the Welcome Center. but. Most of the time we're going to be talking to, to Dan, uh, to the <clears throat> biologist, and in addition to his work here in Kentucky, he also has years of working as a biologist down in the tropics in Belize and Panama down there, as particularly studying tropical land snails. Uh, he is actually, uh, I, I, I read a article he wrote for Manga Bay a while back. He is the author of 17 books altogether, and his latest, which we're going to be talking about, is not quite as serious as the Land, the Land Snails book, but it is Addicted to BS, and we're going to talk about BS here for the next few minutes. So Dan, come on the program and say hi and plug your book real quick, and then we're gonna okay. we're gonna get into it. So hi, um, this book I wrote. Most of the books I've written are scientific books and, and, and uh, papers and, and journals and so forth, mostly scientifically based and on biology, like plants and animals. And and uh, my passion for the past 25 to 30 years has been land snails, both here in the U.S and abroad in Central and South America. This book's kind of out of, out of the norm for me. It's a, kind of outside my comfort zone, but I, I wanted to write about, it started in Sedona, uh, Arizona. I spent some days there with my family. And afterwards, I, I realized that there's a lot of stuff that people believe that just seemed uh, non-scientific to me. So I, I had this concept of writing a book about being addicted to, to bullshit and, and why, how we're so easily addicted to this stuff and, and maybe perhaps, perhaps, perhaps more importantly, how much money we spend annually on, on this stuff. And it's in the billions, so it's a lot of money we, we put into this stuff. So in the book, at the first half of the book, I dig in on uh, things like rhombology and UFOs and alien abductions, Bigfoot and things of that sort. And what I do is uh, I write down what the claims are and then I look for science that supports the claims. And as it turns out, most of it ends up being pseudoscience, not, su not supported by science. However, that said, there are things in the book that are supported by science, like, uh, uh, for example, this, the, uh, the placebo effect is something that is legitimate, and uh, they've studied it and determined that it, it actually a real thing, and, and there's chemical changes in our body that affect our health. Um, other things like acupuncture, while uh, some of it is considered pseudoscience, other parts of it are legitimate, or forced bathing, for example, is something that a lot of us have done unknowingly when we take a walk in the woods, but what happens is there's these things called turpins that are uh, uh, aromas that we smell as we're walking through the woods. And when we go into a forest area and we sit down and relax, um, several things are going on besides the idea of kind of clearing the mind and helping us to, to, to feel 
relaxed and uncluttered, there's these things that we're unknowingly breathing in that are all around us. And these turpins have the ability to actually cause the body to release things like endorphins, which are, we know to be healing. So anyway, of course, bathing is a legitimate thing uh, and other things like that, but most of it ends up being kind of pseudoscience kind of stuff. The second half of the book, I dig in on religion because I had a, I was raised Catholic and had a really hard upbringing as a Catholic, um, not really buying into religion from very, very early on. I had nuns and priests and most of my family just not supported me very well and criticizing me and giving me a hard time for not believing and because I would ask questions that they couldn't answer and it, it really bothered me so I, I decided to write kind of dig in on religion how it affected my life and perhaps how it affects other people's lives and calling out what I considered the BS of religion uh, so that's kind of the, the, the gist of the book so uh, uh... Uh, most of the book is what uh, I, I, I call the fun BS. Uh, space aliens and Bigfoot and ghosts and poltergeists mm -hmm. and all that. It's a whole lot of fun to talk about these things, uh, but, but it's not really germane to the subject we have on, uh, on Collapse Chronicles. So I want to, obviously, since we're somewhat limited in time, I, I want to get to those, but uh, I, I was hoping Judy might, I, I guess Judy's busy, I was going to leave this question for her. We're one week away from the election. This is going to be a real quick question. I just ask everybody this question, Dan, but, but as, a, as a biologist who has studied you just written a book on critical thinking and discernment and, and nuance and whatnot. Why would one human being on the planet, much less 80 million, vote for Donald Trump to be president of this country? Yeah, I, I have a really hard time as a critical thinker, and I think about everything, you know, I. I I look for evidence to support the claims that people make, and and what I see with with uh, Trump is is a is a person that's pretty much consumed with himself, um, and a person that just I mean, as much bullshit as in this book, <laughs> it doesn't compare to the bullshit that comes out of his mouth, and it's it's concerning to me that half of the people in this, you know, that are going to vote are, are supporting him because I'm, I, you know, it's not that, it's not that I, I, I don't really claim either party, party. I, I vote for who I think is going to do the best job. And right now I think it's going to be Harris just because, and I'm not saying that there isn't bullshit that comes out of her mouth. <laughs> I'm sure there is, but there's a, there's a shitload of more, more of it coming out of Trump's mouth. But but it, it, it's not so much Trump. But, but but how are eighty million people in this country buying one word of it and, and not resoundingly rejecting this this man? Yeah, I think it has. To, it boils down to the how easily how gullible humans are. We are we're a gullible <laughs> species. We you know and it's it's, it's called the tr I think it's called the truth the illusion the truth illusionary. I'd have to look it up in the book. I, I write about it. But basically, <laughs> if you're told a, a thing, you kind of like, okay, interesting. If you if you told it more than once, then you start to pay attention. And what I discovered was, the more outrageous the claim is, the more people are likely to believe it. Like <laughs> the idea of people eating cats and dogs, you know, in a, in a small uh, Ohio town. That's to many of us. That's just crazy thinking, outrageous, but it, it caught on because it was such a bizarre and, and far-fetched concept and idea, and it's been repeated multiple times now. So there are people, I've, I've, I've actually asked people about this, and, and they, they, you know, Trump and his and Vance have doubled down on this, and, and to the point where you can't budget at all, and the people that follow them are the same way. They're, they're not budging. Even when the, the information, the facts, 
uh, come out about this one incident, it doesn't matter. To it, 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 it they don't care. The, 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 yeah, they just, it, it just. Yeah. So yeah. So you're. It sounds like you're almost as mystified as as, as anybody else on I, any other yeah. scientist on how the human brain, anybody with a brain could cast a vote for Donald Trump. I, anyway, guys, we're not going to spend any more time on this. And, and do not let anything, the fact that I even brought the subject up, anybody who knows me knows I, I'm not voting for Kamala Harris either. Uh, but it, 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 anyway, I, I just couldn't, I could not resist that. And I'm sorry okay. Judy, Judy wasn't here to pitch in. But anyway, guys, uh, since it, this is Collapse Chronicles, we really need to to, uh, un unfortunately, it was just a very small part of Addicted to BS, and maybe this will be Dan's challenge for his follow-up. I think about, what did you say, 12 pages of the book it is more dedicated to what we talk about here on Collapse Chronicles. And a as you guys know, one of the, the, probably the main thing I've become in th this year is chronicling the ain't gonna happens. Uh, the hopium peddling out there, the apocaloptimism. And so this is what I, I really want to talk for the, the next 30, 20, 30 minutes on them, we're going to end up with the biggest bullshit claim of all about having unlimited growth on a finite planet. But let's work up that way. So, Dan, what, what are some of your favorite ain't going to happens for, for people even that what I call the apocaloptimists who do have brains and understand the the shape that we're in, who think that pixie dust is gonna is gonna save us at this point? What is your general message to uh, hopium ad hopium smokers and apocaloptimists thinking that we're gonna that we're gonna pull ourselves a a out of this downward spiral? Just run with this for a few minutes. Okay. So the, I, I put in, in the book a cell, uh, 12 what I call Syrian pages about, and the title is, the, the, is Green Energy a Solution to Climate Change or a Red Herring to a Looming Disaster. And, and my, you know, I did a lot of research on this, and what I discovered, there was a group of scientists, core scientists, that came up with nine planetary boundaries. And those include climate change, biosphere integrity, biodiversity, ocean, uh, acidification, freshwater use, ozone depletion, atmosphere and pollution, uh, aerosol pollution, uh, biochemical fl uh, flows, nitrogen and phosphorus, land system change, and release of no novel chemicals. Of those nine planetary boundaries that this group of scientists said, we have to, we have to stay within those boundaries or we're basically going to uh, destroy ourselves and, and probably more importantly, all other life forms, or most of the life forms on this planet. And we have already crossed six of those boundaries, according to these scientists. So we're already heading tor towards a disaster that we, we can't, are not likely to, to, to come, to get out of. And um, so, that one of the things as a biologist that I, that I have studied is this a uh, couple things that the ecological and global over, overshoot so in other words um we are at a point that we have already uh overshot the carrying capacity of the planet and when i talk about carrying capacity i talk about something that we see all the time in in in, in animal uh, biology in other words to take a, a good, a simple example, if there's too many bu bunnies hopping around the field, there are the, the laws of nature enact certain things, not consciously but reactively, to reduce that rabbit population back to a, 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 a kind of a, a balance of nature, which is kind of a myth to more of a, a nature sway rather than a balance of nature. But anyway, things like will will kick in like. Uh, Predation, so predators start to increase to knock down the rabbit population. Disease, uh, because there's so many rabbits now, spreading the disease between each other. Sound familiar? Like the you know the coronavirus. 
Um, then there's starvation. They overeat their habitat. They eat too much of what's there that they need to survive. Um, other things like uh, spontaneous abortion is another thing that is very common in, in many species of animals, including humans. Um, almost 50% actually in humans. Uh, fetuses are, are uh, not fetuses, but uh, uh, embryos are aborted uh, naturally. Then there's homosexuality, which is a factor which may have some effect on reducing uh, populations of things like the rabbit that we're talking about. So all these things kind of come in and act as pressures to, to reduce that rabbit population down to a point where it is then, the habitat is, is enough to carry that capacity. And every plant and animal on the planet has a carrying capacity. And so, including humans, and so we're, we're at 8 billion people right now, and it's been calculated that the resources on the planet, the carrying capacity of the planet, might support 200, uh, 2 billion, 1.5 or 2 billion homo sapiens, but not 8 billion. It's, it, so that's, that would be considered global overshoot, you know, when we get, we've already overshot what According to the science, the way I understand it, we've already overshot what the planet is capable of, of supporting for Homo sapien. And we are wiping out about 200 species a day, we're just basically taking them out. Total annihilation, extinction of about two, 200 species or plus a day um, are being wiped out by our, our species in terms of deforestation, uh, global, you know, the climate change problems, acidification is a huge problem in the ocean. It's where most of the CO2 is gone, it's where most of the global heat is gone, but it's, it's actually reaching a tipping point currently that it's, it's no longer it has the ability to absorb uh, the, uh, the CO2 and the heat, so that's now uh, heating up the planet even faster than uh, models have predicted. But rate of change is another one that people don't think about much. So over the, over the time span, if things change more slowly, which is the way it's been, and it's not always been that way. A meteorite definitely changes things very rapidly. But rate of change for, for the most part is something that happens more slowly, and animals and plants can adapt to that. But if the rate of change is too quick, then they can't. And they uh, either die in place, they either move, if they can, if it's a bird or a mammal, they can move, but if it's a land snail that I study, which is a very slow animal, it doesn't have that ability to move very quickly. So it's gonna perish in, uh, you know, in place. And when you have things like the Appalachian Mountains where you have high elevations up to about almost 7,000 feet, things can migrate up, up in elevation but once they reach a certain point, that elevation, that, that climate condition that those species are, are looking for, are no longer there. And that's what we're seeing down in the, in the southern Appalachian Mountains, is that the, the, the things that are at four to five to six, 6,000 feet are moving further up the mountain, but they're running out of space. So they're gonna perish, and they're gonna perish very quickly um, as compared to other animals that can perhaps move, you know, things of that sort. Um, what else? Is there something? It, did I, did no, well, on? just let, let's just um, wing it. So, uh, yeah. uh, okay, so that, that gives you an idea of, of some of the information in the book, but it, it, it sounds like we've, we've kind of restructured this, which is fine, uh, because we, we will, we, we're going to, we're going to put it more in the order of the vast majority of, uh, of interviews that you hear on channels like this. And one of, the reasons, one of the reasons I stopped interviewing people uh, was because of the Hopi. But let, let's do it in the, in the you're, you're doing a good job. So let's get right into it because what you're beating around the bush with, uh, the talk of overshoot, is what I consider to be the single biggest line of bullshit ever sold to the human race.
yeah. which involves what you're saying, and that is the, the outlandish belief that you can have unlimited growth on a finite, you can have infinite growth on a finite planet. So mm -hmm. I want you to talk about, can we have infinite growth on a finite planet? And if we cannot, you've kind of told why we can't, and why do so many people, either they, they've never considered the notion that it's just boring to them, or people like economists or, or will do anything to insist that we most certainly can have uh, infinite growth on a finite planet. So do you agree with me, uh, Dan, that the single biggest, the, the most dangerous line of bullshit being sold to the human race is the lie of infinite growth on a finite planet? Is that the, is that the BS that is going to kill this planet? I would absolutely agree with that. Um, you know, I, I can read, you know, while many are, are oblivious to dismiss or dismissive to the looming problems we now face, nearly all lack of understanding of ecological overshoot, carrying capacity, and the rate of change. Um, those that do cling to hopium, like you said, um, Sam, and it remains doubtful that our problems can be solved with more of the same economic growth technology or questionable green energy, which is, you know, that's another thing. Even though my wife and I live off, off the grid and we're, we are powered by solar, we are under no illusion that it's going to save the planet because, you know, we, just, we can't just keep, whether we use oil, gas, or coal to power this planet or solar, it all requires us to dig into the planet and grind it to dust to, to, to power our, our economy, our, our species. And the end result is that, it, it, you know, we're gonna run out, you know, it, there, it's, the planet is not infinite. And, and so um, our, our predicament weighs heavily on civilization, and, and that's something we didn't talk about, I didn't talk about, but civilization is a big, a big problem because every <laughs> civilization so. that has ever existed on the planet has, has imploded. And it basically boils down to as, as populations of, of any group of people, whether it be the Romans, the Mayan, where we lived in, in Belize, or the Aztecs, as those populations increase, resources decrease. And as those resources and populations get further and further apart, um, societies, civilizations then implode, or they collapse. Uh, and, and it's, it's and, and the thing about, the interesting thing, in the past, nature is very resilient, and I'll just use the Mayan culture because that's what I'm familiar with. And we, we actually lived and in, in, in worked with the Mayan in Belize. And that civilization is one of the best examples of, of, a, of a, not a global overshoot, but, a, but a, a localized overshoot. And as their populations grew, their resources declined, and to a point where they just they just collapsed, a whole civilization uh, collapsed, and many many people starved to death. There were still small mining communities scattered throughout the jungle. They survived, and that's why we have mining culture today for, because of that. Well, there are still Mayans on the planet, there so are. they're the people who came through the bottleneck. They did, and. Interestingly, uh, in Belize, at one time there were two million Mayans living there, and today the population is less than or around three hundred thousand. So the plant, the, the the forest, the wildlife that lived in the jungles of Belize have have rebounded, and today it's it's probably much like it was before the Mayan civilization collapsed. When there were only 300,000 Mayans. Right. <laughs> However, here's the problem. Today, we're so global, we have yeah. we've spread our diseases, our exotic species, our, our filth, our chemicals, across the globe so efficiently, there, are, there isn't anything left on the planet that hasn't been you know, uh, uh, contaminated with our, with our civilization, our filth. And then we have 425 nuclear power plants. So today, 
it's a much different animal than it was, say, thousands of years ago, where a civilization would collapse, people went away, and nature rebound. Today, because of, of globaliz globalization and all and, and the things I just mentioned, if if our civil civilization collapses because of whatever, um, it's it, nature is going to have a hard time rebounding. And if the new plants aren't turned off properly, I think it takes you know an average of what a couple decades to turn one off properly. Um, if they melt down, then there's a problem. We know what happens when you know one melts down. The kind of environmental problems that occur from that. But you take 400 plants and the the ionizing radiation that is then all of, all of the earth can can have effects on the atmosphere, and it, it it's going to have and it's not going to be a, a short lived thing. It's going to be a long lived thing. Will the planet eventually recover? Perhaps I don't I don't know. Maybe things like tardigrades and fungus and bacteria will survive. That's a jellyfish. There's yeah, a good century to be a jellyfish as well. Some of the first animals. <laughs> yeah. But humans aren't going to be here. They're going to go away and I don't think they're going to be here for a, a long time, if ever. Uh, so, you know, I, I, uh, I think we're headed to a... I, 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 don't, I don't have opium. I don't, I don't like the idea of opium because it, it, a lot of people kind of hang on to it. But if, you, if you're hoping that uh, we're going to technology our way out of this. Um, it's kind of where what put us here in the first place. Um, well, let, let's get to that in a minute. I, I, but I want okay. you to flesh this out just, just, just a little bit more before we get into the, into the ain't gonna happens, which is usually where the part of the interview where the people I was talking to start talking about how we are gonna get, and I got so sick of hearing it. I, I only wanna interview people who aren't gonna talk this shit at the end, but before we get into it, just, but, but, but what, there, there, there's two parts of it. Just has Donald Trump or anyone who is getting ready to vote for Donald Trump one week from today, have they ever considered the the biggest line of BS in the history of that you can have uh, infinite growth on a finite planet? Have, have 80, these 80 million people has the idea, including Donald Trump, has he ever spent 15 seconds in 78 years entertaining this idea? Has it ever occurred to him? I, I, don't, I can't imagine that it has, and I can't imagine it has for his supporters. I, I have personal friends that support Trump, and I, I've had these conversations with them. And much of, uh, much of this, like the global overshoot, uh, you know, uh, carrying capacity rate of change ideas and concepts, which are facts, they're, they're not just concepts, but these are, these are actual things that we can measure in science, have, are completely clueless to these concepts. They, they have no idea. I, I have to explain to each of these people what these things mean. Well, and, it's, there's two groups of people. You, 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 they're not denying it because they, you, in yeah. order to deny something, you first have to consider it. You have to spend, you have to spend 30 seconds considering it. But right. what I see, it maybe is it, or, or doomers, do we just need a sexier, uh, do we need a, 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 a sexier, uh, what, whatever, what, what, uh, uh, motto? Uh, is that the word I'm looking for? You can't have infinite growth on a fight. Is it just not sexy enough? People hear that and they just look at you. And, and it, it, how do we get people to consider the idea for one minute. The people who have never considered it, how do we get that group of completely, utterly clueless morons to even consider the notion? Is there anything we can do? Obviously saying you can't have infinite growth and is it getting through to them? No. Well, that's a good question, a million dollar question. I, I, some, of, one, some of the problems I see, and this is my own family, you know, <laughs> uh, is that people are so far removed from science and uh, the, the understanding of simple concepts like this that, that aren't taught in school anymore. Unfortunately, I had to learn this stuff on my own. I, my parents didn't teach me. Um, and so 
if you're listening to one side, like, like Trump, who's not talking about it, who's talking about uh, downsizing the EPA or getting rid of it or getting rid of uh, environmental laws so that projects can move forward and so forth, um, these people aren't hearing this stuff. And, and how, do we, how do we get people to, to listen to this kind of stuff? It's just such a, it's, oh my God, it's like, it's such a disconnect. I mean, it's like, I can sit down with my family who knows and, and somewhat respects me, I guess, maybe, maybe not as much as I think, and we can have these discussions, and these are smart people, gone to college and have, <laughs> you know, uh, jobs that I have, my brother who is a scientist, a toxicologist, um, who uh, is an expert in his field, when we sit down and talk about some of the stuff, he's, he's not only resistant to it, but he, he's like not 100% on board with some of these ideas. And he's, he's very religious, you know, he's, he's, and so even with my brother, who's a scientist, I have, I have a hard time sitting down with him and having these conversations. And I would say he's fairly open-minded uh, compared to you know, maybe the rest of my family when it comes to this stuff. But when it comes to people that are less, uh, maybe educated in these areas, it, it's like it's like pulling teeth, and to get them from what they know and what they believe to like, hey, do you, have you ever talked about these or heard about these concepts, and why this planet can only support so many people? <laughs> there's just there's just so much rhetoric out there about it that it, it's we're, we're fighting a losing battle. I, I don't think there's anything we could say that would change most of the most of the people that would vote for somebody like Trump. They're not going to hear it. They're not going to change their mind, even if they accept it. I think even if we woke up to all of us, say there was, we had this epiphany. Everybody woke up tomorrow morning <laughs> with this epiphany that everything we're saying is right. Like the planet is so right. many people. Technology is a problem. We need to reduce civilization. We need to talk about birth control and population control. Even if everybody understood those concepts, I don't feel like we could make any real changes yeah. because we're stuck in this quite mile, mile of, of this is what our lifestyle is. We don't want it to change. We like being Americans, which are the most, in my opinion, the most privileged people to ever walk this planet. We don't want anything else. We we like our our, our big houses and our, our big cars and being able to go to the store and buy whatever we want any time of the year we want. Um, when we Judy and I lived in Belize, it wasn't that way. We learned that most of the world lives a very different way, and and we learned to do with less. We learned that hey, we can't just go to the store and buy whatever what we want down there. Uh, it, you only buy and get what's in season, and we learn to be okay with that. But I think most people, most Americans, because we're so overly privileged, I mean, I hear Americans saying, you know, they're suffering. I'm thinking, you don't know what suffering is. Yeah. Suffering is what Gaza, the people who live in Gaza are going through. That's suffering. They're being, they don't know where to go to be, to be, to escape being bombed. They don't know where their next meal is coming from. That's suffering. Or the people that we lived, when we lived in you know, Belize and watching people go to the, these roadside dumps and picking through garbage to, to find something to eat or something to sell, that's suffering. Americans, and I won't say all Americans, I know some Americans are suffering, but for most of us, we got a, a really amazing, privileged life that we all, most of us, take for granted. Uh, okay, well, uh, well, let, let's talk about the, the, the second group of people, and, and then we'll then we're going to get into the ain't going to happen. The, the, our okay. segue. So we have this group of the clueless morons who have never considered it, which are maddening enough. But then we have the group of people, and generally, I will use the word economist to describe them and, and kind of people who follow them. Uh, there might be some overlap between th this group and, and Trump supporters, is these, these people who have considered it. 
and 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 and, and they they even get in debates with, with people. Of course, the famous Paul Ehrlich, uh, Julian Simonton, which of course Julian claims that he won, and maybe he did in, in the year that the bet was made, but. People like Julian Simonton and, and economists who do, on one hand, give a nod to the doomers, the Paul Ehrlich crowd, mm -hmm. uh, but then they claim that human ingenuity is that we are going basically to override the, the same constraint that constrains every other species of animal on this planet that we humans, because of our big brains, get a pass that we are going to figure out a way where we can have uh, infinite growth on a finite planet and, and you know through technology and, and agricultural things and, 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 and the whole bit uh, and, and, and more people I, I think more people listen to the economist than to the ecologist at this point which is just the one reason we're, we're fucked yeah. uh, so what do you say to the economists who have looked at the evidence being presented by our side, uh, call them ecologists, call them doomers, uh, and, and then then reject it, deny it, and utterly reject it, and do so publicly, and and have an easy time convincing people that they're right and the doomers are wrong. How do you explain that whole phenomenon? Well, I, I tell you, Sam, I'm not, I'm not up, I don't keep up with what they're actually saying, and so I, I'm not sure I can respond to that intelligently. Um, Do your best. I bet you can, we, I, I bet you can. Wow. Um, a lot of these people are paid, uh, you know, and there are scientists that are surely are paid, I, I won't mention names, but are basically painting a, a, a better picture than, than, I, than it is. And they, they're paid scientists. Um, I, being a scientist myself, I, I, I have colleagues that have out and out lied about certain things um, to, 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 um, to, to, I guess, for their agenda, whatever that agenda might be. Um, it, it, boy, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm struggling with this one because it's, it's not my area. I'm a biologist, not a not, not Well, economist. as a biologist, you're struggling. It sounds like it's fine to say I don't understand yeah. how someone who can be presented with the facts can, can, can sit there and utterly reject the, 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 the open and shut argument you cannot have infinite growth on a finite planet and say, as a matter of fact, we can. It, if you're having a problem wrapping your head around that, just say, I'm, Sam, I'm having a problem wrapping my head. I don't, I don't know how the fuck they, yeah. they come up with something that ridiculous. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I would <laughs> agree that it, it's hard for me to understand how they... Here's the thing, do they fully understand all the things like overshoot and, and carrying capacity? So the thing we talked about, the rabbits. Do they understand that simple concept? Because basically it's an oxymoron to think we can continue to grind the planet to dust <laughs> and there's going to be more resources somewhere, you know, what, out in outer space or on the moon or at Mars? Are we going to start Astero the asteroid? I have no idea the but asteroid, if, no. if that's what is in their mind. But I know there's books out there that talk about, oh, for some people, the, you know, the climate issues and climate change and warming is a problem, in, especially in the, the tropics. But in other places like the Arctic, it's, it's a plus because it's, it's now like Greenland's now melting. And they're being, they're able to grow things there they, they couldn't grow before. So they're jumping up and up and down for joy. The, the problem is, eventually, it, you know, while some places may uh, briefly do better and, and it seem like it's better, the global, it, it's, it's, the sphere is not, <laughs> doesn't live in a bubble. Well, I guess, actually it does, it does live in a bubble. But, it, it's it's all connected. Everything's it's a connected. connected. As a biologist, I see these connections at ground zero. I see how things are changing. Uh, 
with a warming climate, I, you know, things that I studied, you know, decades ago are now disappearing like, like bats because of white nose syndrome, because of, of other things that that's tied to. But, you know, I, I don't know that I can do that justice, so I, you know, I may... Well, okay, well, let's just go, okay, we're going to get in, good Lord, we're all, how are we, for, do you realize that we've been talking for over 40 minutes? Yeah, I'm sorry about I, that. I felt like, good Lord, so we have, we have about 18 minutes left to, to go through what, what, what I've been talking about for nine months, and this is my... Uh, Every Friday, I do what's called the Ain't Gonna Happen uh, Roundup, and where I just survey all of the, this bullshit hopium going on out there about ways that people are claiming that we are, that we're going to come up with a workaround. Uh, so what are yeah. some of your famous ways we're not going to save the planet? What, what, what are you, pick out three or four of your famous uh, ain't gonna happen. Uh, yeah, we're not <laughs> There's so many to choose from, I realize. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> I don't think we're gonna save the planet with, with green technology. Even though I use it, I still, I, I, you know, green energy is, is very much still addicted to um, fossil fuels because if, even if you, you know, uh, like I, we have solar panels and those things took a, a, a shitload of energy to produce. They, they, they had to use fossil fuels, diesel, gasoline machines to go dig it out, the ores needed for it. Um, then they had to be processed and there, there were people that had to make this stuff and then, we, you know, it comes to us. When they're in place, you know, hydro plants, when they're in place or, or I won't go with wind power because wind power has problems when it's in place in terms of killing bats and birds and, and massive amounts of insects. But you when sound like panels, Donald Trump, brother, be careful. Yeah, I know. Because the eagle killing windmills, which yeah. I agree with Donald yeah. Trump on that one. Yeah, it does. <laughs> and does it cause cancer? No, but it, it does have its problems. But hydro dams, you know, just discussing those, uh, it takes a shitload of, of concrete to build these things and it, it completely destroys a, a river ecosystem from uh, a very rich, uh, diverse system to a very, uh, pretty much a, uh, a non-diverse system, a big lake. And the cold water discharges affect freshwater mussels that can't reproduce for, for 30, 40, 50 miles downriver because the waters are too cold from the... the, the and the anadromous fish yeah, that so can't it, get around these things. And then you got the problem. methane as, the, as, as yeah. all of that stuff is rotting and bubbling up. That's true. And so solar panels, when they're in place, after they're, they've gone through all the resource extraction and building, when they're in place, they're probably the, the most benign in terms of, of environmental impacts once they're in place. And then you got to dispose of them. Okay. Yeah, but then there's all this uh, recycling. This, <laughs> we, don't do, we, we do a lousy job of recycling. Um, and it just it allows us to continue to, to, to burn fossil fuels and, and, you know, and, and increase our population. And the thing with, the, one of the problems is, even if technology could give us all the energy we ever needed, it just the, you know, to, to bring up the, the uh, this eight billion people on the planet today, the planet can support, the, living the, the average American dream, whatever, whatever that means, can support about a billion and a half people, according to, uh, what I've read and the way I understand it, but to bring eight billion people up to just the average American lifestyle, okay. it would. My understanding is it would take additional four or five uh, yeah. planet Earth to get there. Well, okay, so so that ain't gonna happen. Ain't We're gonna not happen. gonna have eight billion. No. We can put that one in the AGH cap, but that you're not gonna have eight billion people living at the American level of lifestyle. No, uh, we, we have basically said you can't live like we do because... Right, Judy, you know, you're, you're, you're going to sit down and join yeah. us for the last uh, 12 minutes. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, so what sorry we're, about that. Uh, yeah. Sorry you had to be so busy today. So what we're talking about, uh, th this is Dan's uh, wife, Judy. Uh, we're talking about all the ways we're not going to save the planet and right. instead of, cause so many of these interviews 
that you hear the last 12 minutes or talking about all the ways after they talk for 45 minutes yes. uh, uh, about how fucked we are mm -hmm. then they spend the last 12 minutes talking about well maybe we're not that fucked yeah. but I think the two of you fully agree with me that in fact we are fucked yes. oh, yeah. <laughs> and that we're not pulling her so no, uh, no. he's now he was just talking about I'm sorry to interrupt. letting no. us know that you two no. have solar panels uh, on your house and these guys these guys walk their talk okay but he fully admits even though you guys have solar panels on top of your house you're not kidding yourselves for one minute that no. that solar panels are going to save this planet not at all nor anything else we do we walk the talk and we walk the walk because it feels right to us and it feels like the right thing to do but also basically it just makes sense for us for the way we live you know we do live very simply and we've chosen to do that for lots of mainly economic reasons we choose to spend our money on experiences and not stuff and so we've we've made a conscious decision yeah. to do that not necessarily because it's saving the planet but just because it makes more sense economically for us so we do live very simply and but you know we have solar panels because we live our driveways a mile long and so you know we it, it wasn't you know economically feasible for us to get electricity out there um and you're right they do, people do spend the last 12 minutes always we, we sort of chuckle every time we listen to these these things you know it'll be like oh i'll helpful. be like dan oh they're they're finally going to be telling the truth and we listen we listen we listen and then that last few few minutes those last 12 minutes but you know we can say this and we can say that because people can't handle the truth and and don't know how to deal with yeah. the reality of what's going on on the planet dan and i've chosen to handle the truth and we live every day like it was our last moment because it might be. Yeah. And, well, and it might be any, it doesn't matter, you know, I mean, that's true for anything, no matter whether the, the planet was going to shit or not. You know, you know, we each moment is, we don't know when it is going to be our last. We can't predict. But we've chosen, especially in this time, to let go or be dragged and don't be attached to the outcome so that we, we live fully by those two philosophies which is freeing and releasing and instead of being sad and depressed about it all so let go of the drag yeah and let go of it i mean it's like you know we you know we, we we fully understand and there are times when it still is you know super depressing but most of the time it's just like you know we're here we're gone we're gonna live and enjoy what we have and and not and not let it not let it drag us around to the point where we can't enjoy whatever was left of our life. Well, I look <laughs> outside and notice you have not made the switch to electric vehicles. No, no, we no, are. because um, also also that also takes lithium batteries that are you know with rare earth metals that are mined you know and put on the backs of very very poor people mm -hmm. and also affect their environment. So yeah, I've, we've made a conscious decision not to do that because it takes more power, more energy. Our system. So you made a conscious decision not to get yeah a, yes. a electric vehicle. Yeah, because yeah. because yeah. because of of those for ethical reasons, but also again practical reasons because we have solar power, and to us that's ridiculous for us to be plugging in a car. <laughs> to charge a car that we can only drive a certain amount it just doesn't make any sense and um, and you know more than more than that it's that there is no free lunch these these things have to come from somewhere i don't know if dan talked about the fact that they're trying to mine rare earth minerals now from the bottom of the ocean by we, scraping the bottom of the ocean. yeah we we we, we have yeah. an uh... yeah and so, you know, that's the, the next great insult is to the, the ocean and, you know, trying to, you know, mess up the ocean life way down in the bottom of the ocean to get these rare earth minerals to make the switch to electric cars that are supposed to save the planet, which makes no sense. Well, one of the lines <laughs> in my book is, well, can you read that? Yeah. Just that one. When, when green advocates want to keep hydrocarbons in the ground, renewable technologies need critical minerals to come out and it come out, or in the case of the deep blue ocean, sucked up by giant vacuum yeah. cleaners. This is the green energy paradox. Solar panels and batteries require yeah, common. It's a common refrain. But even the, he was talking about er, er, earlier, uh, um, uh, the planetary boundaries, you know, that's Johan Rockstrom. Mm -hmm. Have you heard his latest TED talk? Oh yeah. Uh, on his latest TED talk, 
where he spends 15 minutes laying out why we're why, why we're fucked. Right. That we have crossed six out of the nine boundaries, and then out of nowhere, you can almost hear you can almost hear the little pixie dust falling. Mm -hmm. He completely goes into hopium and, and, and says that we are going to pull ourselves out. Yeah. And, and, and my jaw just and I said another one of my heroes. How do you explain Johann Rockstrom? Johann Rockstrom yeah. uh, going down this road. Yeah, it, 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 to me, it's all of them had funding issues. I think, I swear, I think it's, you know, <laughs> they, have to, they have to try to justify it some way. And, and again, people don't want to hear the truth. They want something that's sugar-coated and, and cannot handle, they just, just emotionally can't handle it, I guess. Well, I'm assuming yeah, that TED Talks, that they get pressured, that you can't leave oh, the course. people. Yeah. Hey. You have to give them some, <laughs> have to give them some of the, <laughs> well, they, of you know, so they can all go out them. there and celebrate with their margarita instead yeah. of drowning their, yeah, yeah in, 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 in any way. Uh, so, yeah, to, so the hopium or the ignorance? <laughs> well, no, I, I think, well, you know, again, as a, a lot of what I put is in the book. It's it's not like up here stored. It's I stored it here in the book, but it's kind of ignorance is bliss, a blanket most will hide under until the bitter end. Denial of science doesn't alter the facts. Hopium is held by those thinking that something, God or someone, not me, will fix the troubled world. Uh, but hope without action clearly gets us nowhere. Um, but to me, you know, the biggest problem I see is all the lying. You know, we, we're, uh, we, lying seems to be so comfortable with our species now that we lie to ourselves, we lie to each other, we lie to our kids. And I think it's the bigger, if there was a sin, I don't believe in sin, but if there was a single sin, I think lying would be the biggest one. But because imagine a world that we didn't lie to each other. We got the facts. We could base our decisions on facts, but and, and real information as opposed to half truths or lies. And that's what we're, we're flooded with today. So it, it's a real problem. So you, so you think, and, and I honestly don't know. This is just what, what when I'm trying to figure out hopium peddling. You think that some of the hopium peddlers are flat out lying. Yes. They, they they actually agree with us. They they know that this that the that yes. this whole thing is going down and they flat out lie about it. I think if you were to sit down with some people like Michael Mann that gets interviewed all the time, <laughs> uh, behind the scenes, not on, on, a, yeah. on a video, he would say basically we're fucked. But he doesn't do that. He talks about the problems. And how we need to change now, which is impossible. We can't change our economy overnight, over over a year or over a decade. It can't happen. And so he talks about this stuff, but then at the end of each of yeah. his talks, we're talking about Michael Mann, yeah. he makes the declaration that, but if we just act now, which yeah. is completely bullshit. We can't act overnight. It just is well, impossible. Uh, so for what we, I mean, he may have already said this, but hell, we we can't even get a fan, you know, people and family members no, to agree about yeah. anything, you know, I mean, why do we think that we can collectively, you know, it's like we, we don't have, the, we have the knowledge, we don't have the collective will, we can't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, I, I put in my book, we, we know what the problems are. In some cases, we're not to fix it. What we lack is collective will. We will never have collective will. That's impossible. A few people around the table can agree on something, yeah. and then a room full of people, not going to agree on everything. Eight billion and people. Eight billion people. Ain't no way they're ever going to agree on everything. It just can't. It just yeah. can't happen. We just aren't structured that way. But 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 I honestly think that more people agree with the hopium peddlers. There's so much hopium peddling going on that more yeah. people yeah. on this planet who, who've ever oh, even considered course. it. Yeah think that we're going to pull ourselves out of this mm -hmm. then think we're uh I, I just have to share this real real quick my, sure. my my own brother 
who has a master's degree in journalism and a BA in political science from Emory University. He's the author of seven books. He lives in Fort Myers. He was completely destroyed in Ian. Spent $100,000 uh, rebuilding his house. Then he went through uh, Helene. Mm -hmm. He goes on Facebook last week. This is my brother, who, mm -hmm. I, who I have not spoken to in four years. Posts on Facebook, God spoke to me during supper last night and told me Florida was not going to have another hurricane the rest of this decade. <laughs> and it, 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 what, what, what are you supposed to do with this? When you're a doomer and, and your brother with a master's degree in journalism with seven books behind him who's been through two hurricanes, doesn't have a religious bone in his body, is posting on Facebook that he spoke to God over the Beanie Weenies and, and God said there's not going to be another hurricane in the state of Florida uh, at least in the next six years. I think Einstein said it best <laughs> when he said there are two things that are infinite. Uh, human stupidity and the universe, and he wasn't sure about the universe. <laughs> yeah. I says it all, I think. But what was the quote from, from the other from quote you just that. mentioned uh, about civilization? Read that one. Civilization. Oh, the end. Well, I'll let you read it. Where, you're where so it. who yes, said it? This all right. Okay. Yeah. The the end of the human race will be will, will be that it will eventually die of civilization, and that was Ralph Waldo Emerson. Emerson. Yeah. yeah we, we've had these people that have had these profound thoughts for quite a while, and and we haven't listened to them either. So, yeah. so how I, do we think if there, anybody's going to listen to us or anybody else? Well, as I say, uh, Don Quixote in the year uh, Michael Cervantes was saying this in the year 1600. He was. He, 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 he was he was saying you can't have infinite growth on a finite planet no. when there were when the population of this planet was one billion people and they hadn't invented fossil fuels yet. I get it. You want to do it? But uh, sure. She's gonna take. I'm gonna take other people. She's gonna read though. It's kind of summarize uh, these yeah, top, yeah, top pages. Right. I have kind of an end summary of well, what. Okay, what, you go take yeah, it and then come so, back and join us, so and we'll wrap this up in about five so, minutes. So Dan and I don't have hopium. It's good for you. We don't have hopium. You're in the right but we place. We also don't sit around like crying in our beer every minute of the day about the the, the horrible state of everything yeah. and how stupid everybody is. We already kind of know, but but we we choose to do this. We choose to, um, so is there a radical solution to the environmental conundrum we're now faced? You bet there's sweet bippy there is. First of all, Edward Abbey once wrote, action is the anecdote to despair. Subsequently, if it makes you feel better, then by all means do something, whether it's marching in the streets for environmental justice or eating your favorite ice cream or howling at the moon. Lastly, and most importantly, in the fleeting moments in time, seek out your passions while abandoning your indifferences. Be grateful for that astonishing endowment of life. Find solace and humble kinship with the Earth's remaining wonders. Embrace sincere friendships and family with enthusiasm for all we ever have for certain of the moments. That's it. That's all you can do is, uh, is I keep coming back to on this yeah. channel. That, that's what, when people ask me, what, what, what's your advice if you honestly believe that we're fucked? I do. <laughs> and, 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 there's, and there's nothing at this point, there, there's no other answer other than get out there and enjoy it while, while you still can. Exactly. I, I mean, every, every day that you have the beautiful day like this yeah. and, uh, and, and, and you, you know, hanging out with friends and people that are like-minded, that does help. It does help to have people to talk to that understand. And you know, whenever we first found your channel and we reached out to you, that was good for us because we we kind of felt like ships in the night. You know, we were feeling all these things, and then you find somebody else that's like, yeah, I agree with you. You know, so that helps to have yeah. that community where you can kind of bitch and complain about it all, and then, <laughs> you know, and, and say, then, uh... yeah, you're right, and then and then kind of move on and enjoy the friendship. And, and head out, and as we're getting ready to do, uh, 
go have a pizza. And then go have some fun and have a pizza. And go have a pizza, have a margarita, yeah. and, and, and go play trivia. Yep. And, and, uh, which, which matters not a damn bit, but it's super fun. <laughs> so. Yeah, and, and, and trick or treat. So yeah, uh, yeah. I, 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 don't I, I hope Dan that. gets back for the. Here, the, let the, me. The, I'll, I'll run Brad the, and then I'll wrap you. up yeah, I'll last rest, minute. I'll all right, Sancho, we're getting ready to go have Sancho is we have put the dog to bed again. So this is the beautiful day here in uh, in Slade, Kentucky. But of course, I, I need to put Dan in the in, in the hot seat. Since, so, see, the last time I interviewed Dan and Judy, the camera collapsed after 28 minutes, but I didn't have a second battery. So I made sure today that I had a second battery. So Dan, since we never got to this question in our first interview, uh, the way I wrap up all my interviews, uh, if you had, if you were not talking to Sam Mitchell from Collapse Chronicles and his little band of imaginary Doomer friends on YouTube, but you actually had a, a, a microphone in front of your face and said, Dan Dorison, you have 60 seconds to send out a biologist message to the planet at the end of October of 2024, what would your 60 second sound bite sound like? Go. Okay. Lastly, and most importantly, in your fleeting moments in time, seek out your passions. Uh, is this the Edward Abbey quote? I'm sorry? Is this the Edward Abbey quote? This is mine. Oh, this is yours. Yeah. Okay, because she just read the Everett Abbey quote. Yeah. For her. So, okay, this that was is a Ralph Wall. The uh, the end in the end times of race will. All right, all right. This is you, this is this is you, not Everett Abbey. Okay, because yeah. you didn't hear. Okay. Did well, she read this one? The last she one? read the uh, Everett Abbey. Okay. The, but you're not reading the Everett no, Abbey. Okay, not. this is the Dan so, Dorson. Yeah. So you know, I I kind of sum up this this twelve certain pages of you know, okay. what's going on, and this is the last. Okay. Last year. Lastly, and. Most importantly, in your fleeting moments in time, seek out your passions while abandoning your indifferences. Be grateful for the astonishing endowment of life. Find solace and humble kinship with Earth's remaining wonders. Embrace sincere friendships and family with enthusiasm for all we ever have with certainty are the moments. Okay, well, she read that, but I thought oh, she was fine. reading Everett Abbey. Oh no, that, it was not. She led us to believe that was Everett. So you're not, you're, you're not. So all right, well, we we got uh, the so, same. So now I got to come up with something else. <laughs> we 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 got these. No, I'm glad to know that. Well, was you, you, you because you because she was. I swear she attributed that to Everett Abbey. I guess she tagged. Well, it's it Everett. No, so that was so. Is there a rational solution to the environmental condom we all fought, yeah. face? And this yeah, is mine yeah. too. You bet your sweet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Okay. And okay. It, there was ever ever did say some action is the end of uh, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, 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 okay. I just didn't realize okay. where Edward closed off and you started off. All right, Dan. Well, I really, really appreciate it, and I uh, wish we hadn't had that collapse of the thing because we would be at 59 minutes right now. Okay. Uh, anyway, we're off to uh, have a pizza. But Dan, you do not. You're not going to have a margarita with us. I. This man does not drink coffee or alcohol. I don't. <laughs> I always tell people I don't. Uh... I don't do drugs. I don't chase women. I don't. I think about women, but I don't chase them. But you caught one. Uh, I don't drink. I don't smoke. But I do chocolate. Ah. Right. And if I could snort chocolate, I would probably snort chocolate. All right, we're gonna it's, go get him my, some chocolate to snort while yeah, Judy and I nice. enjoy a margarita. Anyway, guys, uh, that was fun, and we will uh, see you down the pike.